Uh, ladies and gents, and everything in between, welcome, welcome. Welcome back. Uh, mostly to me, um, uh, for I have been awake uh, for just over a week, sunning myself in the Costa del Sol, uh, spraying my kids with water pistols, and then spraying myself with alcoholic beverages to make spraying my kids with water pistols that little bit more tolerable. Uh, luckily for you guys, though, or perhaps unluckily for the world, uh, the well-orchestrated orgy of awfulness seldom gives itself such a week off. Instead, or indeed, uh, society is forced to endure a relentless, endless purgatorial nightmare. Um, the likes of which frequently send the toughest of men into inconsolable, sobbing fits. Fits like those exhibited by my unarmed children when I charmlessly assassinate them with said water pistols. Guys, uh, what has been going on over the last week? Let's step through it, shall we? We've had the Westminster Honey Trap, in which an unconfirmed number of politicians and possibly journalists may have become compromised, which is a difficult thing to imagine being successful at trying to blackmail politicians over their sleeves. That doesn't... Like, like, we're not supposed to realise already that our politicians are sleazing. Like, that is not shocking information. That will not fill out an expose, guys. Um, we've had OJ Simpson dying. We've had Richard Tice living. All of it is scandalous. Guys, uh, Biden might let Assange go free. Meanwhile, the male seemed to want Angela Rayner jailed. So it has been a hell of a week. And as always, I have my guest here tonight to try and help me make sense of this godless abortion that is modern politics. Uh, so please welcome to the show a returning favourite, guys, to this satirical comedic vehicle. And in that, he's very fitting because he's an absolute joke of a man. Uh, notable only by way of his myriad of mental challenges from mild sociopathy to depression to self-sabotage. He's the only man in Britain to have sought a diagnosis for these conditions, but come away with the doctor concluding he's simply an asshole. Uh, he's my friend. He's your favourite. It's John left of the countryside. Woo! <laughs> well, good John. evening. You know, the good thing about having technical issues is that it gives you an opportunity to do like a test run, right? Rehearse. Why not? Yeah. Why not rehearse on the fly? Yeah, it was good. I liked it. I liked it the second time. Yeah, I feel like the second time it had more feeling, maybe. More like I was confident with the words and the tone. and It was good. I was going to, I was like trying not to go like that. Yeah, fair, fair. Um, so quick, quicker, little bit of podcast admin for those of you who are just joining us. Uh, so I do a, a live show most Fridays. Uh, and when I don't, I try to pre-record one. Um, and this week I've asked for some Q&A, some questions ahead of time. I've got those ready to go, so I'm going to fire those over to John in a bit, and he and I can share some thoughts and feelings uh, about those. But also, we're just going to touch on the week's news, and we're going to shoot the shit. Um, frequent viewers, listeners will know that John has been on like three or four times now, I think. I think it's like five, I think. Yeah. We usually start with the best of intentions, don't we? Like, to try and keep mm -hmm. it political. Uh, but it well, I think news is political. It's fine. It counts. Yeah. But how long would you say usually it takes before we... About four minutes. It? <laughs> Go into stories of our youth. Music. Yeah, it's good. People have tuned in like, oh, I like this guy's tweet thread earlier. I wonder what he's got to say about Angela Rayner's latest blah, blah, blah. It's like spend 45 minutes talking about a Silver Chair album. <laughs> what is this? Um, but yeah, okay. So before we get onto the Q&A, let's, let's at least try to, uh, to be a little bit topical, right? Because as well as the... The stories that I mentioned, uh, there were some other bits and pieces that came up this week. Um, there was some stuff about Caroline Flack. I don't know if you saw mm -hmm. that. Um, uh, in fact, I'll, I'll hand over to you. Did you like what, what did you make of this Caroline <clears throat> Flack stuff? Well, it's 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 a really sensitive subject, and um, because that these things are, it's her her mother has been campaigning for the police to reassess the fact that they were going to charge her with assault on her boyfriend, the thing that she feels was the spark 
that right. that set off her, her daughter's suicide. I think the whole thing is in, is incredibly sad, but I think it, we we must um, the law works the way it does with domestic violence for a very very good reason. It's for the safety of victims, and if you hit somebody in the head with a bedside lamp, yeah. you should be you should be charged by the police. Yeah, you, you should be charged by the police. And what happened? was she did do that her partner called the police and um, he actually requested to drop the charges but the way it works in the domestic assault cases now is the police can decide to charge on the victim's behalf um, and that's what they did they called the cps and to ask if there was a case the, the cps said that they should the police the recommendation was to caution caroline flack for, for the um for it but the police actually appealed against that decision and said she, they felt she should be charged um, right. and taken to court. And then her mother feels that Caroline felt the pressure uh, of the upcoming court case and that it caused her to commit commit suicide. Um, it's a piece, there's a piece to this, isn't there, around like, and maybe I'm not going to be popular for suggesting this because if you applied it to a male domestic abuser obviously it'd be it would become hugely problematic and and the dynamics there you know you could fill a whole podcast in in terms of what the changes are in dynamics between men and women but is there a piece there about like you know if you do get charged of a potentially like career ruining life ruining crime should there be some sort of publicly funded entity that actually can like counsel you through that because it's like you've done something stupid you really wish you hadn't done it but you did do it and now the repercussions are going to come for you you might lose your job you might lose your house that must be a really terrifying thing i'm sure I, she's I, not. i see what like... you mean i just just to, to be just i do it's a it's a sort of thing in my head i do want to refrain from calling <laughs> domestic violence something stupid um i I think if you flash your bum out of the back of a cab, mm. I think that's something stupid. I think it's striking a partner during an argument, I think, is violent. Yes. I do agree with what you're saying, though. I think that would be a very good idea that if we're... if I don't... Just for full... Um, to be open about this, I I don't have a television aerial, haven't had one for six years, and I have mm. absolutely no idea who Caroline Flack is. No idea. Never seen her or anything. Don't, from what I can gather, she's not famous for anything that I will benefit any sort of, mm. you know, she's not a singer or, or, or in movies or anything, so I don't know who she is. Um, <clears throat> I know she did Love Island. Again, I don't want, I, even when I had a TV, I didn't watch... Um, reality tv but that, that doesn't matter i think i think you're right i think it'd be a very good idea to to if these people are in the public eye then maybe it, it would make sense to have a deduction from your wages like a you know uh from your union fee mm. so if that happens they... then you get into the realm of like one rule for them right no 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 because you're saying you no know, because you could be I don't need insurance for an incident that might happen in a mine because I don't work in a fucking mine. But what I'm saying is if you've got, you're paying for it, I'm not saying publicly funded. I'm saying take 5% before tax or something. Uh, or not 5%, 1%, half a percent, whatever the fuck. And it pays your union fees and something happens. They come in, you know, somebody comes and says, shit. Right. Let's stick your head back together again. Yeah, like, I'm sure there is, like, they need to do something, because I can imagine that, like, if you, if you do get yourself into some sort of trouble, and it is, it's totally your fault, and you should face the repercussions for it, mm. it can't be right that society just then says, well, you're about to have a mental breakdown about this, because this is actually really serious, and, and allows you to go down that rabbit hole of, of, of like, the risk of you taking your own own life like absolutely but but, like, for, but, it, but then the other side of that coin as well is it cannot be domestic violence mu must be the charges are pr are pressed by the police should the victim mm. say reverse them because we 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 know 
through you know hundreds of years that yeah. that's what happens is that the the, the uh, cues apologizes says they'll never do it again blah 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 blah, blah. And, and usually it's a man yeah that's i mean i'm talking thousands to one um <clears throat> but the the police take over and press charges regardless of what the victim says i think that's a really good piece of legislation that isn't that old yeah that the the victim can no longer drop the charges i think of well, course he did drop the charges but the the police and the cps said there is a case that is that needs is answerable something needs to be done i wonder i wonder, I, I wonder what happened in the reality what would have happened in the reality of her going to court being found guilty of domestic say just saying say she was found guilty of domestic violence yeah would that be the end of her career because i can never get over the weirdness of um Ant McPartlin pissed, crashing his car into somebody, and then afterwards yeah. going, "Why, yeah, he's a bit of a joker." <laughs> uh, what? Yeah, I the mean, fuck. If there's one thing I've learned over the last week, uh, it's that there is no real thing like such as, as cancel culture, really. Um, oh, I've lost your fucking fucking OJ for fuck's sake. <laughs> I've lost your your visual. Why have I lost oh, your face? I don't. Um, know. I should come back. I uh oh is it a bandwidth thing? Hopefully it'll, it'll I don't know. I'm not it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be anything. I've got thirty six meg up and down. It says uh video for John has been turned off to save band Oh well, here you go, you're back again. Um Yeah, no, I was just gonna say like I, so over the last week I've been looking at uh the P. Diddy allegations. Mm -hmm. I watched a, an interview with this sort of he's quite a prominent uh, prolific content creator called DJ Vlad, and he interviews like loads of like big hip hop people. And um, mm -hmm. anyway, they had him on Piers Morgan's show to talk about the Diddy thing, and um, and he said, I think Piers Morgan was like, you know, is this? I guess this is the end of his career if it's proven to be true. And and anyway, this Vlad guy was just like, he goes, well, people would have said the same thing about Kanye West, like only two years ago. He said, like, I love Hitler. He was on, on a show saying, I love Hitler. And but, now he's got a <laughs> number one song in America, like independently released. So has it's he? like, yeah. He's I got, never, I I've never called, understood. But... but he has never had the impact. Kanye West has never had the impact here that he's had in the States. I don't think, I think worldwide. I mean, I just think if you the first thing if you say kanye the first thing i think of is conspiracy wonk bell end i don't think or yeah. i mean shit socks um r kelly's cancelled but okay so that's a really interesting one because um i i was considering that when the diddy stuff the alligator the first batch of allegations from his ex-girlfriend cassie came up this is a couple of months ago um and I was like, if if any of this stuff gets proven true, how likely do I think it would be that it would it would be career ending? And I thought back to R. Kelly, not the um, surviving R. Kelly stuff, but when the first load of allegations came out against him, and after those allegations landed, and they were pretty serious. Like it was it was amongst some of the worst stuff that he'd been accused of. After those landed, he released ignition. That, okay that's so, and then it shot to number one like in the u.s certainly i don't know if it ever it was like top 10 here it's like a massive song and people just this is what i've learned it's like diddy kanye r kelly and it could just be as true for somebody like caroline flack not putting her in the same bracket no 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 like r kelly yeah you, but like I, all it takes I, is like good i think content I get, or good art you, and people will forget it i think the british are more damning do you reckon mm. I do. I know from, well, I think we've spoken about this before. I definitely a comedy hero of mine was um, Louis C.K., an incredible writer. And then as soon as I found out about the, the allegations came out, I was trying to, I was watching his sitcom, Louis, which is, yeah, well, which I felt was really underrated and really, really good. And, and, um, and I was, you know, going through them. And I was even kind of saving them because it's not that many. So it's like two a week. Oh, I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. And as soon as I masturbate in front of interns came out, I was like, I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> Just done. Even And now he's on the road to a comeback. And I'm like, no, no. Really? <laughs> yeah, so I don't give a shit. That's really interesting because uh, 
I've I've had a, a conversation with um, a friend of mine, Sean, about this before. Uh, admittedly, just over WhatsApp, um, but also a couple of other people have brought this up about people like Michael Jackson, people like like R. Kelly. Very nuanced one because they don't know where to put it because he's dead. Yeah, and and we've seen no like. <clears throat> evidence but it's... so to speak he didn't say louis ck said that is true mm. i did do that and i'm yeah. sorry and i just think and you're done i'm not but saying michael it's... jackson it didn't do anything but i yeah i don't know i i don't know what to do with it because we never he never had the day in court really i i know what you mean and i i applaud your ability to detach yourself from somebody that you previously admired for something that they that they admit that they've done um the first thing is i am psychologically able to detach the artist from the art i don't know why no. if that's a, a character flaw i can completely like i can watch a louis ck bit now and be like oh it's really funny um it doesn't bother me in the same way that it does like a good friend of mine stoff he's a really really good animator we used to do some like comedy videos and stuff together and i remember when the louis ck stuff broke and he was like I, I don't know if I would class it as livid, but he was really noticeably angry about it. And he said, like, you know, some of you lot, like he was talking to the rest of us in this like little video collective. He was like, some of you lot have got girlfriends, you've got sisters, you've got, you know, like, how would you feel? Would you would you brush it off like this if it was, you know, if there was some guy in the office that was behaving in that way to her? And obviously the answer is no, you wouldn't. But um, But there's something about, art and high no. profile art that's it's <laughs> i like, can't do it i can't, it, can't yeah do it. i'm not it's saying possible. it's like it's probably a character flaw in my head that i'm able to do it but it's no, I, I, it I, doesn't bother I'm, me the I'm same done. way that it should. I, when you uh, it's it, 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 it's as soon as you see the the thing like if you know um i'm trying to think of some because uh, I, I, it's not like I was, I, nobody was watching Jimmy Savile and going, oh, fuck, I can't watch my favorite J Jimmy Savile right. stuff ever yeah, again. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, as soon as anybody went, he's a massive, you know, you went, yeah, that makes sense. That, that yeah. was, that was, that made sense. Oh, Gary Glitter, I didn't go, what's my favorite track? So they didn't work. Yeah. But there were writers and um, people like um, the founder of Scouts, Baden Powell, and pretty, like, dodgy stuff. And I mean, that's a hell of a benchmark in the in the paedophile world if you can create a, a basically or it's like a paedophile farming system yeah. that's not a bad idea but i also think like with hip-hop it's perhaps a, an interesting angle of it is that because so much of the content and specifically diddy content is around partying around you know hot women being around you lots of money no. flying around even bragging about doing some of the stuff that now he's like alleged to have done mm. so it's like i i didn't do it you said that you did oh yeah i forgot but like because the lifestyle and the culture and the you know the part maybe i i like, just i i, I, may, I don't know i i more. can't do the separate art from artist thing I, no i'm yeah. out straight away it seems i you uh i bet you do this aid eh? i often watch um i'll watch a, co a comedian and i will be completely silent and the person i'm watching with will go oh i thought you liked that and i go that was amazing that was the absolutely right, amazing right. didn't laugh once but but because i just like watching the masters the mastery of doing something stuart lee's callback or repet or uh, repetition Mm. It's a piece of absolute genius. Like it's so clever to watch. Billy Connolly. Anybody who thinks Billy Connolly doesn't write is insane. But <clears throat> the way he gets a feel for the audience that they're going one way, so I'm going to go along this sort of thing. And the callbacks, I I, yeah. I, I just enjoy them. And the way Louis wrote or writes, I don't really, but I don't care anymore. Was very clever because he exposes the internal thought processes yeah yeah which i thought was a genius and but but but, but yeah wanking in front of internet is weird do you know do you know what i think it 
it is with myself is I maybe I subscribe too much to the idea that this individual, like whoever it is, whether it's a Louis C.K. or a Diddy, or, well, not really a Diddy, but like if it was a Tupac or if it was, you know, people who are truly great at what they do or did, uh, I uh, subscribe to the idea that they are unrivaled, that somebody else could not meet them on the same terms within that genre that level of artistry their creativity like they are unmatched and could not be matched whereas when i spoke to my friend sean about this he was like like i can't remember if we're talking about michael jackson because he's another one is like i'm pretty certain he was a raging nonsperger i'm not like i don't need to be won over about that even in the absence of evidence like the testimony is i i just i don't know some of it's not the the kid that he paid off that that's actually really bad evidence and things like uh macaulay culkin's testimony Mm. was pretty the other way like nothing ever happened like i I, you know he's even said about other things that are are, are awful in the industry like the the account that i read and it's you know i don't know if it's the 100 percent truth but the account that i read was it suggested that at the first trial he agreed to be photographed to to prove his innocence and then the description that the boy gave matched his (laughs) his photographs (laughs) perfectly and then he was like all right we're gonna settle we're gonna settle um so that's where the 25 million came. yeah but i mean but the other thing that's a i I i've no idea i'm not even i'm not defending him i I just don't know um i will totally admit i had tickets for the millennium tour oh right did you um yeah, I remember being woken at like midnight with like Michael Jackson's dead, and I was like, "No, I'm sitting at home at the Millennium Dome." Yeah, hey, that was. I mean, again, but, sorry, that just, that was post accusation, and yeah, every ticket gone in yeah. twenty minutes. But this is what I mean: it's like people will forgive or at least look the other way for artists that are able to meet their expectations in a particular genre Mm. Um, and kanye and probably diddy and r kelly like they're all kind of testaments to that rule and i think like with me like i look at the so when i was having this conversation with my friend he said oh you should just go out there and then find new a new comedian or a new singer there's a whole (laughs) ocean of music out there that's just undiscovered go out and find but in my mind like psychologically i'm always like but there'll never be another michael jackson there'll never be like another this person or that comedian or do you know what i mean i agree about the lack of michael jackson i'm just plugging in a charge by the way because i don't want to be that guy who goes and my phone's dead um I thought I thought you were just getting up in a half like fuck this guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say it's a good jump though to go from here to yeah. OJ. Oh yes, yeah. Because now, nice segue. We're, we're in a position. I, I always find it really weird where you don't say. <clears throat> so actor and NFL star. Yeah. Um, wow. OJ Simpson has died, which has been the line, which I find fucking mental because that's not what he's famous for. Mm. Wife, <laughs> wife stabbing nutbag would yeah. have been way closer to the mark. It's um, not like it's it's the equivalent of like I guess a David Beckham or like a Wayne Rooney, like somebody who's truly a star of their sport who's now moved into, like, branded work, but, who then murders their wife. Like, he played his last NFL game, I think, in 1979. So we don't, yeah. you know, it, it, we, I know him from, I knew him from Naked Gun. Um, but, <clears throat> and I remember going to see Naked Gun 33 and a third at the cinema. Mm. But I, but I, but OJ Simpson, I probably if you'd said his name prior to the nicole thing i wouldn't have gone oh yeah from naked gun he was just uh he wasn't a massive character leslie nielsen was everything in naked gun i know him as wife killer i just find it yeah weird it was it's it, weird like legally it, they can't refer to him as that 
because he was acquitted. Is that what it well, is? He was it, but the civil case, he was charged. He 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 lost the lost the lawsuit for thirty three million dollars. So you could yeah. say, um, yeah, definitely, you could definitely call him a murderer because he's and, been and proven then, in court to be a murderer. I don't know if this is quite so um, so well known, but he then deliberately moved to Florida because Florida has specific state laws that suggest that if you lose a civil case in another state you can't go into florida and then take that money off that individual oh, okay. from his like nfl pension it's mad so like everyone focuses on you know rightly on the murder and the, and the loss of those lives but also this this guy we're talking about a guy here who like one of his closest friends i remember watching a documentary about this a few years ago and he was like he was about to go to jail over something oh it was a robbery that he ended up armed robbery in Vegas, yeah right? for robbing his to to own memorabilia that. yeah and he ended up this guy flipped uh and, pro and he was a witness then for the prosecution who sent oj down for like 12 years whatever, whatever it was mm. um and he's he gives this interview and he goes like you know i just thought about oj's character and all the things he'd asked me to do over all of these years and then the zero times he had ever helped me out <laughs> And yeah. I asked myself, like, would he ever keep Stum for me to keep me out of prison? And I came away thinking, F that N-word. Like, that's what the guy said. Weirdly, like, I've, got, sociopath. I've got first person um, thing on this. It wasn't that. But okay. I got I got a phone call. I was in India on holiday. My phone yeah. rang. And it was my friend ringing on um, WhatsApp, I think, or Skype or something. And I was like, mm. picked it up, like, dude, you know I'm in India. Why are you ringing? And he'd been accused of uh, basically slander. And I said, listen really carefully and do everything I say. And he said, okay. <clears throat> so I said, apologize, right? Immediately apologize by letter and copy it and you can be as sarcastic as you want in it like <laughs> make it dripping with like i'm so sorry there is no way you're a raging nonce burger you are definitely i wish you were my brother right go mad with it like, do what you like <laughs> but apologize and send it <clears throat> via your solicitor and put a copy into the police station right are you listening to me and he said Yep. And I said, I honestly, I honestly mean this. Do exactly what I just said and do it immediately. He ignored what I said. Right. <clears throat> denied it. Was charged. And he got 24 months in, in, in prison. And all the time he was there, um, when he came out, he said to me, I got letters, I got emails, I got phone calls, and you didn't contact me once. And I said, you didn't fucking listen. Right. I told you. Two years for slander. I thought you'd like get sued or uh, something. <laughs> it was on. Well, I'm trying to think of what it was called. Uh, it, the new law online. You know, if you write something untrue about somebody online, it's called. Um, I can't remember. There's a very right. specific law. If you write something. Um, was this in a foreign country or? No, no, England. <clears throat> wow. But I rang. As my niece always says, she says, you know someone everywhere, which is true. And I know a barrister. So I rang my barrister friend and he said <clears throat> it was a brand new law. And he said that ma the magistrate will want that on their thing. So they will throw the book in like immediately. They want it because then they go, I, I, I pressed, I've done one of them. And I did yeah, this. Yeah. So I set that up. Uh, so that's how I knew going in, you're fucked. And I said, listen, he won't speak to you because it will count as legal advice, but I'm telling you, I can use the name because it's fairly generic. But I said, Paul, I've rung Paul. Um, you made me ring a Crown Court barrister <laughs> and he has told me you are fucked. So listen, yeah. apologise immediately. And and he didn't. And I sent him no letters. I didn't ring him. I didn't email him. And I just said, you owe you, all your fault. Fuck you. Wow. And you would think, so not to make this all about me, John, uh, but it is my fucking show. No. Yeah. Um, uh, you would think, and I don't want to tempt fate here, so touch wood before I say this, but you would think I would have had some sort of 
warning or scare by now, but I'm quite careful. I'm like, you, you can't. But, but, but I'm not going to. I won't. I don't need to tell you why. But the, the, um, we all skirt. We all skirt. You you can repeat something somebody else has said. That that's right. perfectly that's legal. Um, you can't slander the dead. So I can say, um, Baden Powell was a um was a homosexual paedophile who raped children wow and uh, nothing can ever happen um <clears throat> you can you can quote somebody else that's perfectly yeah. legal yeah you didn't do anything um uh calling somebody a liar is perfectly fine you can't really do it calling somebody a nonce on on facebook <laughs> typing it down it's a very yeah. very bad idea yeah, well, this is what I thought when I saw Joey Barton having a Twitter meltdown. Um, mm. Jeremy Vine invited him on his show, like, you know, would you be interested in coming on and talking about your feelings about what, whatever? Oh, it was the female football commentators that he was kicking off about. Um, he's fucking mad, isn't he? I mean, don't he's, like football he's at, at all. But clearly Jesus going through Christ. some things, yeah, mm. and or at least he was that morning. Um, and then he started trying to publicly shame Vine for asking him on the show or so there was some sort of beef back and forth then he starts calling him bike nonce and i'm like whoa <laughs> okay we're there are we and um and then he started saying that itv were pedophile protectors or like th there was something around them like itv is an institution protecting or harboring pedophiles i was like i don't know if you can libel an institution like a company it'd be civil that's not but legal. You'll be civil. Like you could, I mean, you're you're tarnishing the commercial reputation of a broadcast. You'd be right, so. that. That's so loose, though, that, that you'd only have to find one, and that wouldn't be that difficult. Yeah, just Somebody's scroll, just, um... just find the TV guide from 1985, and go them, <laughs> and then you're pretty much you've whammed them. They're fine. Yeah, Somebody's no, you're right. Just, there. Uh, punninators in my uh, in my live chat. He's uh, he's just gone. Um, he said, like John says homosexual paedophile who rapes children and then he's like oh look there goes AIDS monetization see these sorts of uh, accusations or words or terminology are so toxic they oh, cost the commercial commercial like well-being of people who are not even involved it I got banned so. I got banned from Facebook for a month yeah. for writing two words what were they though? Jimmy Savile. Really? That, that was it. it. I got banned. I thought it was going to be something to do with. No, literally that those two words. Mohammed. <laughs> no, those two like, words. What did you say, John? Together are there's a really good one, which is crazy, which works on um, TikTok as well. Mm. Um, Maddie McCann. Well, that gets you banned, does it? Uh it'll get your video muted. Um, wow. I, I, I made, I, I, it wasn't even like a, I, I'm not really a fan of that, that I, I think, I think child death isn't that funny. So I, I made, it was something about it. I, I literally just mentioned Manny Cat. Um, yeah. I mean, and, look, I'm, I got, I'm a fan of, I would never describe myself as a, you know, one of these free speech ultras. Um, I'm not a sort of Elon Musk. It's not, it's you know, not free speech, is it? It's just, it's just yeah, being like, horrific as but, a human. But I do, I do cling on to this idea that basically, essentially, everything can be made into a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some capacity. everything. Uh, yeah, it's got to be. It's got. I, I just think it has to be. I, it was However, exactly that. Yeah. I was making a. It was making a joke and not not the easy one. Because no. the reason, Aid, I, I do, I've done this before. Somebody will be telling a joke, and I, I know it's going to be racist or homophobic or whatever, and I've just, I've stopped them mid joke and gone, don't, just don't end the joke. Yeah. And that's really, it's like stopping someone sneezing. They don't appreciate you doing it. They just go, don't yeah. end it, because I'll think less of you if you end the joke. But the reason is, the reason, I don't like the, I don't like it because it's it's going to be one of those things and that's a horrible thing to be but as somebody who has adored comedy since i was a child mm. it's so lazy it's so lazy it's such a pathetic thing like because you know <laughs> you're like, uh, yeah, yeah uh, i feel crap. like so so my 
general rule with that kind of stuff is like so anything can be joked about but you have to accept that there's a lot of hard work that's going to have to go into making this thing over here work as a comedic reference because it's going to be hard to hear like if you're a audience and you hear a reference to madeline mccann you better put some serious work in yeah. to couching that reference so there's something before it even if it's like a minute or two minutes before it so it gets them on your side yeah. so they know you're not a monster there's that or you could use it as a metaphor so you're not actually making a joke about madeline mccann you're you're using a missing child as a reference as a metaphor for something else going missing that you have no hope of finding I, maybe it can be simple i dropped a c-bomb in a um oh you, oh you didn't audition for a five John. and the compare rightly called me on it and he just went yeah he didn't do enough for it like and he was right because i just wanted to say it like it was it was like it was a li <clears throat> it wasn't a bad setup but it didn't have it there wasn't enough build to drop it yeah yeah and he went you just wanted to do that didn't you and i went yeah and he went he said you're on tonight but just lose that and he was right yeah and <clears throat> and weirdly that made me stall on stage i probably got the biggest laugh of the of of that of the set off that thing because i think the setup was um i've always wanted to be a serial killer but like it was sort of this i hate it was a joke about they always do vox pops with the neighbors of serial of, of mad bastards <laughs> you know they go yeah, what yeah. was it what was he like and people go lovely bloke i borrowed his shears a few times and i, I could never I, I could never understand why the neighbors of a convicted killer don't just go don't lie and just go well i thought he was a nice bloke but he's clearly he's clearly <laughs> an evil mad bastard but i would never go he's he makes the best hot chocolate you've ever had like that was not what i'm gonna remember him for i'm gonna remember him for going yeah. mad with a shotgun yeah i don't know man what I else we've like... got we've got Sorry, more can... news haven't we saying about mad with a shotgun we got more news about man with a shotgun. No, mad, going mad with a shotgun. We've got the parents of a, oh, a right. high school yeah, killer. That's right. So, for the benefit of those who have been completely engrossed in uh, Look at Marina that. Gate, um, yeah, uh, it's a, you know, there's all the stories that we went through earlier at the beginning of the show. Um, but over in the States, something quite interesting has happened. Like, there's been a legal kind of landmark case where obviously they have a lot of school shootings mall shootings cinema shootings you know we all know the horror stories however when there is a school shooting you know a teenager gets given a gun for his birthday or takes the gun out of his dad's safety deposit box or whatever usually what happens is everyone goes oh he's he seemed a bit dodgy he wore trench coats he was into marilyn manson but you know some kids are a little bit messed up and he, he made the wrong decisions and then that's the end of it or they like they blow their brains out or they go to some juvenile detention then they never leave jail that's the end of it um what's happened now is the parents of a school shooter have been prosecuted under manslaughter laws so now <clears throat> basically they're drawing a line in the sand over in the states they're like if you are the parent of a, of a school shooter we will find you responsible if you bought your kid or let your kid have access to a gun then you also are culpable in this and you will pay a penalty the, um, the, the, there are some very um bold like in bold bits that people need from the court case which is mm. it was proven undoubtedly that he had expressed ideas yeah uh, etc and there were moments that it was that the the, the, the catastrophic events were stoppable by the parents yeah that was that was what the court case was um was it did he make it obvious to his parents he was going to possibly do this and it was proven unequivocally that that, that, that is true that, that he did do that so they they are i feel they are rightly in jail <clears throat> um yeah. i think they got 10 and 12 years i can't remember which way around it was um 
Well, I mean, like, so they should. I do think shitty. I mean, from anybody who's ever sat on a bus or in a restaurant, you don't. Yeah. You know, when the kid, when some, I, I, I have a, um, um, a thing called misophonia, which is a um, sound of certain sounds drive me mad. And adults who eat like orangutans drive me mad. But oddly, animals and children don't bother me because they don't know that they're not doing anything. But mm. acting like an arsehole, if your kids are being shitheads in a restaurant, I mind not at all if I see you trying to correct them, you know, trying yeah. to say, don't do that, right? Then I, that, and they carry on. That's a very different thing from you just ignoring it. Yeah. I don't, I get, I still don't blame the kid. I'm finding the kid annoying, but I think you're, both the parents are fuckheads. Which, like, you, you set out quite a lot of the context a minute ago admirably, but it's there's, there's actually some extra to it, isn't there? Like, they not only did they buy him the gun, but he took it, didn't he take it into school and he got busted with it in the rucksack? So the principal calls the parents into school, which, as you've touched on, should have been that warning. Mode. Like, Thanks why were you taking there. this? We, we bought this for you as. You know, as a present, you shouldn't really have it, but we bought it for you because you said you like guns, but we're not going to buy you ammunition for it. Like, um, And then after that, there was another checkpoint where they caught him trying to buy ammunition for himself. So there's all these red flags flapping around this disturbed kid. He got busted for drawing a picture of another kid in the classroom who he's shooting in the head in the picture. And the teacher... Everyone's going like, your kid's really messed up. Why has he got a gun? He's trying to order this ammunition for himself. Are you sure you don't want to step in here, Jan and Buck? And their <laughs> response to it was like a text message to him going like, all right, just, you know, try not to do it again. Like, I, 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 I was talking to somebody about this. I, <clears throat> I work with um, lots of um, uh, foreign nationals. So, so Bulgarians, Lithuanians, um, Ghanaians. And... And we were just talking about different experiences of being away and your reaction, people's reaction to your nationality. Because I think that's quite like a, like a, I'd say it's quite, a, you know, just, just expanding on things. And yeah. one of the biggest things, whenever I've traveled in Asia, one of the biggest things is initially ordering a drink because the drink's quite fast, you know, um, can I have a beer, uh, can I have a pint of beer? They might ask you another question, but like, oh, um, are you staying locally or whatever in English? What they're actually listening for is they're checking you're not American. Really? Yeah, because if you're British, they're like, oh, he's a Brit, right? But if you're American, they're like, get fucked. They, there really? is a real hatred for because they think, oh, they're going to be a bell end. But they, but yeah. Well, they might ask you directly, you know, oh, where are you from? Oh, Britain. And they go, Oh, thank goodness, not there. <laughs> Comes up. But then it's like, like the, I mean, there's an irony to that because all the Americans that I've met over here, or indeed in Thailand or wherever, have always been lovely, like really friendly, well travelled. Could be why, but that could be why they're still there. Right. So this is because yeah. I've seen lots of Americans moaning about amazing stuff, like being outside in Thailand and it's 35 degrees. 100 percent right. humidity and they're going oh my god it's hot right yeah i know everyone <laughs> knows you fucking idiot that's when you want to get that begby scene cracking right <laughs> yeah 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 um right let's let's do some questions shall we should we do some yeah yeah go, go, guys go, go. uh in the live chat if you'd like to contribute any questions obviously i'll prioritize um any youtube members or patreons or super chats um and i've got a few lined up here from a tweet that i popped out earlier so let me just get my uh me and my browser um little thing here here we go right so first one from richard marsden if the universe is infinite there can be no concept as being discuss if the universe is infinite there can be no such concept as being. That's. I feel like this is deep, bro. This is profound. That's a stuff. really. I really. I really. I really like it. That's really good. Is that is... has that come from your brain, Rich? Because Richard is in the live chat also tonight. 
Um, I think I think that's a that's a, that's a, that's a um, I like so if it's that, always but... in process, if it's always expanding, how could you just be static? How could you be being? Isn't that a fantastic question? That means yeah. there's not a only. So what we know factually is that um, I, it's gone. I, I, I need to click the thing, but I haven't. <clears throat> so I remember when Hubble was at the point where we could see 36 we'd seen seen 36 right. billion light years of that bit of space and there was nothing that could sustain life within 36 billion light years which i think is an amazing thing so you think 36 billion light years so if you got in a cab going uh, at the speed of light it would take 36 billion years to get here that's a hell of a cab there mm. Um, and people think they've been abducted by aliens, which I find fucking weird. <laughs> but then it's like someone would have seen them coming. But see, this is like we, we are getting a little bit off off topic. Where we certainly no, no. But politics, that means but... there is. But the beingness is that there is only. You know, people say there might be another me looking back at me. Yeah. But in an infinite universe, there is. If they could, with big enough telescopes, there'd be an infinite number of you looking back at you. I think that's like, I, but whenever I think about this concept. whole like so like the the universe is expanding and but there's no life. It's that there's a famous uh, it's the name of a paradox. I somebody will let me know it in the live chat, I'm sure. But like it's like the extraterrestrial life is inevitable. It will be out there somewhere and yet where the hell is everybody? Like that's the famous quote from this scientist mm -hmm. or, or whatever. Um but I, I feel like, is there not a place for this sort of idea that there is life out there, but they've just learned how to cloak themselves? Or like, they've looked at Earth, they've seen what a state we're in, and they're just like, I don't want to be seen by the <laughs> Earth but people. 36 billion, which we, we think of as a massive number, in an infinite universe is nothing. Yeah. Nothing at all. Yeah. Like they could, it's complete nonsense. There could be dolphins that go to work every day or there is no in an infinite universe there is dolphins that go to work every day yeah, the, uh, in the there's an infinite center, number of them hmm? um right let's go to the next one uh mickey a says what do you wash your hair with uh i guess that's for me i wash my hair with uh, nivea um i don't know if that's glamorous or not i literally i like the smell of it i pick it up i like the smell of myself after i've used it as well and it's it's like a gel and a shampoo thing which is probably really lazy i don't gel know if it's good for me and shampoo shower gel and shampoo together oh right, right. i thought you my hair gel i wouldn't have a fuck that went off no no uh I, that's a that's a different thing i use whatever's uh, on offer is my answer do i like it. taylor swift right this is an interesting <laughs> right so no to begin with then she did this album uh with the guy from the i can't remember the name of the band now but it was like a guitarist a producer or something from okay. the the something and it was really arty it was really like you know echoey indie guitars like little ghosty pianos and i did quite like it it was like it sounded to me like a phoebe bridges album uh and then somebody's talking to me about it last week and they were like but would you recommend it to a friend would you tell them to go and listen to this taylor swift album and i was like no because i think if you want to listen to a phoebe bridges album just listen to a fucking phoebe bridges album do you know what i mean so it's like i do do i like taylor swift yeah ish i think of. that personally my feeling would be which isn't an accusation because there's quite a few artists I think of like this. I couldn't give a shit about a music output. I, I hear no. it, like especially normally. Well, let me ask you this, John. On a TikTok, but I, but she seems like a nice person, and that's a, like Adele. I wouldn't go and buy an Adele Adele album. I wouldn't put it on my playlist. But she seems like a thoroughly decent human. So, let me ask you this off the back of that. Given that Diddy and Kanye. These are individuals who have, uh, or maybe no. Diddy and R. Kelly. These are people <clears throat> who have been alleged to have behaved certain ways or convicted in R. Kelly's case. But then they've done 
or R. Kelly did like a... Basically, the point I'm trying to get to is what if Taylor Swift did something absolutely obscene and awful? Would it then invert and you'd uh, quite like it? You're kind of stuck in this, because I didn't like <laughs> P. Diddy before <clears throat> and I don't just... like him now. And R. Kelly, I have one thing that I... I believe I can fly it was out, I think, 96, 97. Yeah. I used to go to the same disco every week and dance with the same girl to that same song mm. and never once asked her out like, because that was my entire teenage years. Was wow. like, yeah. like, I, 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 I and, maybe and... did that 12 weeks in a row, same disco, Friday night, um, dance with girl not ask out leave <laughs> that was kind of thing so i i don't know what our case output is i don't care so uh, the, the reason i like adele and taylor swift uh, in <clears throat> what i like about them is they seem like decent people i don't like their music output i also don't like puff daddies or r kelly's and they seem like shitty people <laughs> yeah so, it's like it, and they've it's always puff daddies stuff. always seem like it to be fair he's always come across a fairly shitty human yeah no, fair enough. Okay, let's let's try and do a couple more, shall we? And then we'll we'll do these two on the uh on the tweet thread and then we'll Definitely. jump into Definitely. the live chat. So uh Soapy Cockroachian <laughs> which I, I think is a you know, wordplay of Sophie uh what's her name? Cochran. Um oh, Sophie Cochran. Yeah. Um Screwfix or Tool Station? You can take that one. Um Screwfix. Okay. Um I use because uh, uh, I uh, I work in construction and screw fix they're expensive but they'll have it right right and, and even though it will be like 20% more than you can get it on Amazon wherever the fuck it is I, I can get it and get it quick the way it works with the crew is when everything goes fucko they'll go oh I need x and I go keep doing whatever you're doing so we can stay on my schedule I'll get the fucking thing. Just keep doing it. And then I'll be back in, in half an hour. And so, uh, yeah. And Screwfix is your place of choice. Yeah, they've always got it. Whatever the I fuck must it admit, is. We have a Screwfix down the road from here and I've never really had any issues. Um, Tool station's so, cheaper. Um, right, let's do uh, Kai Von Braun. Um, chances of Sunak uh, just stepping down as Prime Minister Zero. and MP at the end of the year, December the 1st, oh. for example. What would happen... Could the Tories appoint a new leader in time? What would reform do? They don't reckon the, the Tories are the, <clears throat> the thing is with the um, Tories. They're they're at their their break point was probably November last year. That was their chance to to, to go another way, and they were they, they're in an awful position where you needed a recognizable human to do it the whole front bench is made of goblins liars and perverts like they're just dead yeah and they thought we might as well stick with what we've got which is somebody awful i, I mean i don't know how you think but that they were way past that now they can't even there's no taking it back and reform who gives a shit for nothing they might get one seat if they really try if you think they'll get more you don't understand the election i think you're broadly right um i think sunak was probably the uh what's, what's the word the sort of um i, I want to say game stop but that's not the right term like the sort of stop gap that's what i'm looking for um, yeah and they fucked up they held it too long well yeah, like so i think so they had trust they wanted a safe pair of hands that was the key thing right so you had sunak and hunt steadying the ship and they thought that would be enough to get things back on the straight and narrow um clearly he has all the charisma sunak um, ideal world who would you so who would you have picked i've got mine in my head like like we're we're june 2023 right and right. you can choose but it have to be a serving mp uh right, what to apart... be leader of the tories yeah you can pick anybody uh... uh, to, to win we're going to win <laughs> right i would have said penny mordant probably would have been the not bad choice. I wouldn't because I, I, I think they've got too much gamut and they don't want a woman. So my, mine would have been Mercer. Right. Not senior enough, I don't think. No, no. But you, you had time. 
Mm. Mind you, Blair wasn't that senior when he got. Yeah, you history. could have you could have moved. Mercer was this is <clears throat> he's a bellend and he's a fake army bellend, but you <laughs> could have made him appear human. Yeah. So at one point it looked like he had integrity to me. He was oh yeah, no, he had, Johnson to account. He's um, an absolute fucking. <laughs> but he looks but like yeah. he might have, and they might have fallen for it. But now we're we we are. The horse has bolted. It has got its feet up, and it's having a margarita and shouting we're, horrible also, racist I, I think, slurs. Yeah, I think also he would have been exposed before too long for being a bit of an idiot. Uh, like I, I don't think oh. he's fully across. Like he, but he. I'm sure he knows a lot of stuff about veterans because that appears to be a subject that's close to his heart and good for him. <laughs> but in terms of like wider policy, for example, when he was on Question Time and they were talking about energy policy, he clearly didn't know what the fuck he was talking about. <laughs> but, so... we, ben, but Ben Wallace is the defence secretary who seems to have kept ducking fire constantly, which is apt. But I mean, yeah. he's a fucking womble and no one's noticed because... Yeah. No, we'll give the shit. Whenever it goes, when we talk about Israel and Gaza, for some reason we keep flipping to David Cameron, but right? instead of going, let's talk to the defence secretary, which they never do, because Ben Wallace is this weird, fat, balding fuckwit, and he's yeah. never, and he's not, he's gone through, Liz, he went through, um, he was oh. um, Boris's, and then he was through Liz. Yeah, and then he was sooner, and then it's like he just hides at the back, like <laughs> like looking busy, and nobody notices. Get rid of him; he's mental. <clears throat> I was talking to my um, lady friend, lady oh friend, yeah, this evening about the height of Rishi Sunak, which which I think is a really interesting subject. Rishi Sunak right. is is five foot six. He claims yeah. to be five foot seven, but he wears uh, lifts in his shoes, which we can all see because his ankle bone is an inch higher than his shoes, which is really fucking weird. Either yeah. his feet are really thick or he's wearing a, um, he's got lifts. <clears throat> he wears trousers that are too short. And whenever he gets an official photo taken, nothing in the photograph is can be used for scale. So there's no there's no chair you know there's no chair that could be used for scale because you don't have big the chair is. there's no other people yeah <laughs> He's, we have uh, the, the the prime minister of the UK is insecure about his height which is so scary yeah like what what would happen if Sunak got in an argument with Trump about height and hands <laughs> yeah but I mean the Trump's taller is I think he's five foot nine. Oh, yeah, but I'm saying, like, Trump's... In, he's apparently sensitive about the size of his hands. Everyone says he's got tiny Oh, because they're very tall. So, like, he's mocking him for his hands. He's mocking him for his height. Like, what kind of weird, fucked-up, special relationship nuclear war <laughs> would we unleash? I love the fact the Americans are... They, they always kind of seem to think we're really interested in their election, and we're all going... They're picking from the same two demented pensioners again. Yeah. Fuck's sake. I think it was uh, Ian Hislop who said a few years ago, he was like, you know, they were talking about the UK parties, Labour and Conservative, and he looks over at this uh, American guest on Have I Got News For You? And he says, uh, whereas, you know, in, in America, of course, you have a Conservative Party, and then you have a more conservative, conservative Party. <laughs> yeah. I've done that Which joke is... with American friends before, God. You know, they're like, ah, oh, the Democrats are so left. And you're like, yeah. Bet. They're really not. They're, they're more right wing than the Tories, and we yeah. are like them. Um, let me just uh, scan up a little bit on, the, that, yeah. on the old chat because um, we we probably missed some uh, some questions in there. So, um, hopefully, I've got to the beginning of where we talked about like putting some questions out to the chat. Uh, we've got. Um, do, 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 do. Sorry, hold on two secs. Uh, Trump or Biden to destroy the world? What do we think? <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to go with what I previously said. I hope Biden win, but with a caveat that I, I don't mind if either of them or both of them die in the next five years. Right. 
They're terrible. America needs to stop electing people in their 80s. It is fucking mad. Stop. I feel like it doesn't matter who's... Like, I'm so disillusioned <laughs> with America. Oh, Trump. And, and Trump UK is politics, like, insane. Like, but to me, they feel like they're just two adjacent offices of the same company. Do you know what I mean? And maybe people would say the same about the Labour and Tories. No, but that, I, that's not... But I, I, um, I do know that to be untrue. Like, I know, should Labour, should they call the election in May, which I'm really, I think I, I'm done with this, this is silly, but um, <clears throat> there's going to be at least 24 months mm. of not fun. Um, yeah. I think... I think we need to get uh, to the nub of the problem in the UK, which is we all need to, to live in a better society um, and to fix stuff we're going to have to pay. I think that's a, I think that's something we need a realization we need to get to. And I, I, um, that's a hard pill to swallow, but I think it's going to happen. And we also have the thing that, um, Starmer has Starmer has a much whatever you think of him Blair like it's like Blair to me Blair had a really good front bench I what I'm not a fan of Tony Blair and never ever ever was he 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 made my life fucking horrible when I was 16 17 18 uh, and continued to do so for another 14 years whatever the fuck it was <clears throat> and the, it, as long as the Tories don't win the next election, we're going to have a bad time. I th yeah, I mean, but I don't think they're interchangeable. I, I think I think Labour are very different. I, I cling on to the hope that at least with Labour, like Labour will mess things up, and I'm sure there'll be bad apples, and I'm sure there'll be scandals and exposés and all the rest of it. But I cling to the hope that. In terms of sensibilities and principles, I feel like more people within Labour are in it for the right reasons. Yeah, and I like when they do mess up, it will be like genuine incompetence, which is kind of forgivable. Whereas I think if you get another five years of Tory, it will be the opposite of incompetence. It will be determined, definitive, like corruption designed to fuck you over. The reason and they're different the di things, they're different products. So vote the for the product that is, you know. The reason for the Daily Mail attacking uh, Anthony Rayner and the right attacking Anthony Rayner over and over again, yeah, it's because it's she's an actual human with mm. real experiences in life. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I think Keir Starmer is he is he really is from a background where his mum was a nurse, and he he has everything he's got. He has he wasn't. If you compare somebody like Keir Starmer and say Matt Anker. Hancock or Rishi Sunak, that's ridiculous. Yeah, they are not the same people. I'm not, I'm not, uh, uh, um, uh, I don't really care about this. It's fine, I'm, I'm happy to talk about it. But I've been in meetings with um, Keir's social media guru, yeah, and I had a weekly meeting with him, and I and I feel that gives me a bit of background on they know the dirty game that's up for, for up up for thinking. And they weren't up for being that dirty. Mm. They wanted comedians and silly bastards on their yeah. side, which they already had. And uh, and they wanted to discuss it. But, um, and they could have been a lot more horrible. Than the way yeah. they're putting things out. I wonder if they'll be dirtier in their campaigns. <laughs> I don't think they will. Like... I don't think that. I don't think there's a need to. I think. I think what we need, we need the date so that we can get the manifestos. I, I think the most important thing now. Mm. I, I think it's really important because um, people forget things. Uh, I, I I read all the manifestos, and the Lib Dems is always funny. It's very funny. After the third page, it starts getting properly funny. 
Um, the manifesto for reform is going to be unbelievable, unresearched, complete shit. Yeah. Um, the Green Party, you can say what you like, anybody can, but it's a very bad, I mean, considering everything is on this document, they put so little effort into it. It is, it is surprising how much mm. they don't. When it comes to their, all their green policies, are absolutely great, and the rest is garbage. Healthcare, everything is completely stupid. Mm. I need to spend more time looking into this. Like, I, I mean, I've been waiting to hear more about, well, as we all have, about what might make it into the uh, into the Labour manifesto. And that's in, in, another thing that I think we're all clinging on to is like we hear so many stories about pledges being rowed back on or pledges being abandoned, and it's difficult to really maintain that's why, that, that hope. But yeah. once, they're, once they're all printed, you can't change them. Once, yeah. And that's why I understand why cards are being held close to chess because mm. it, it, it is really important. Um, Immigration has become the something it should never be, really, because people. I remember when the people were confusing asylum seekers and legal immigrants, and I thought, and I, and I, I wouldn't have the discussion with people who couldn't define the difference. Now they can't define the difference between immigrants, illegal immigrants, yeah. and asylum seekers. I mean, fucking hell. Yeah. If you if you can't if we've now added a, a bonus group, fucking yeah. what? What now? We have to include people who are legally here because they can just come. But this here. is the thing, like, and I'm sure you know I'm sort of preaching to the choir here to some extent. But this is the thing: you have to factor in that most people out there are fucking morons. Like most people are willfully ignorant. They completely abandon any, like people try to educate them. They have nieces and nephews that are like, are you seriously, you're going to vote toy? Have I told you about it? Like read this you need. And they just bat it away. They're not interested. They've nailed their flag to the blue mast or whatever. And that's enough for them. They don't want to be lectured at by young whippersnapper <clears throat> snowflakes or anything. Most people are fucking stupid and they don't know the difference between like a refugee and an illegal immigrant and a legitimate immigrant. They just they, they see, oh, 500,000 people, immigrants have come. Well, that must be 500,000 scroungers that came in on the back of a lorry. That's that's how I make sense of that figure. I remember I, I, I had this suspicion. <laughs> I have this thing which I think that someone with a 90 IQ is is it's very dangerous yeah because you're thick <clears throat> but you're not so thick that it's noticeable but you are thick enough to not know you're thick and i checked Just how that, that perfect window <laughs> it's brilliant I, I, about 89 and 91 <clears throat> and i checked how much how many people in the UK had an, an IQ of 90, around about 90? Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I think everybody should go and check that. It is, it is seriously a lot higher than you think. Because we know 100 is average. Yeah. So there's a great joke, which is 50% of everyone you meet is stupider than you think they are. Right? Yeah. Which is, which is well, if amazing. Well, average, right? That's what... See, now I'm going to show my lower IQ. Is that like 30? So population is 65 million. So if the average is 100, then that would be like what half 30, of the population should be Do you think 34 million are that or below? Yeah. Yeah, it's worth so, definitely 90. Check. But then it, like that's... 90 is shocking. very dangerous. Conspiracy theorists about... I, 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 I think have an IQ about 90. Fuck, I've just realised the time. We've been gassing away here the whole time. Yeah, I know. I don't know. that ages ago. I've got to go. I'm going to be late for Labour Social. I'm so sorry, man. Um, once again, thank you to my good friend, John Left at the Countryside. Uh, for thank his, you for having uh, me. Yeah, no, you're very welcome. It's always a pleasure to have you on and uh, extract your thoughts and feelings about the uh, the world, the universe tonight. I'm not and even, everything. That's not even hyperbole. We've literally been talking about the universe. And everything. Um, and everything yes um thank you so much to everybody in the live chat for joining us um every friday night half past seven thank you 
always to the Patreon backers and the YouTube community members. You guys rock my world. You give my funny bone a funny boner, and I love you for it. Um, that's it from me. I really do have to run. I've got to jump on Labour Social. If you want to join me over there with Graham Hughes, do so now. I'm sure he's probably got the stream already set up. Go and give John Left of the Countryside a follow on TikTok. And until next time, we're out this motherfucker.